Hey everybody, it's Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC Report here in my studio in Seattle, Rock and Roll City. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about why Americans get so confused by what they call soccer. Now, I realize that in most of the world it's called football, but in the United States, if I talk about football, F-O-O-T-B-A-L-L, -L, they think I'm talking about NFL football, you know, Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, or uh, Geno Smith and the Seattle Seahawks, or N NCAA, collegiate football. Well, it's a different game, of course. They do have some similarities. Occasionally, people <laughs> in American football actually use their feet, but not very often. Well, to run, but not to kick the ball. Uh, so, occasionally there are kickoffs and punt returns and field goals, in which case the kicker comes out onto the team, which is one guy who only kicks and doesn't play the rest of the game. He only put, he comes in for that one play. It's very different from international football. Okay, but the World Cup is taking place here. The United States is involved in the World Cup. We've seen some miraculous goals and upsets. Saudi Arabia versus one of the top rated teams. Argentina was an example of that. So it's raised a lot of interest and there've been there's been a lot of news coverage about the World Cup. Also a lot of controversy, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about this issue of Americans and why they have a hard time with it, uh, with the sport in general. And I'll I'll give you a few um, characterizations, I guess is the way I would put it, of what I've heard um, Americans say during soccer games. Okay, that's what they call it, soccer. Okay, when I say soccer, Americans know what I mean. The rest of the world is like, why? Uh, sooner or later, we're going to have to deal with that issue, folks. This Anglicization of the world and the way that we use uh, words in in uh, the United States that nobody else uses. Uh, for instance, you know, we never and in many cities we don't call them by the name that the that, that actually city calls itself. Like you know, we say Paris, not Paris, or you know, um, it's not uh, München, it's Munich, or whatever. We have our own way of saying other people's cities' names, which is only our way of saying it. Well. We've also tried to appropriate this idea of what football is. And to the rest of the world, I'm telling you, um, football uh, involves people kicking the ball. And they all kick the ball. They also use their heads, their chests, other parts of their bodies at times. It's just not the hands. Now, that's one of the things that really freaks out Americans. You know, I heard this one guy say once at a sports pub, you know, it's like, well, why don't they just pick it up and run with it? That's stupid. Why do they use their feet only? That's so awkward. I'm <laughs> thinking, well... Okay, and then somebody else said, they, he used his head, is that, <laughs> is that fair? Is that, isn't that against the rules? I'm like, no, it's certainly not. It would be to use the hands, though. So that really confuses people, of course, because in American football, it's all about the hands, and you use your feet to run, nothing else. You know, you, you know a lineman cannot kick the football in American football. That's totally illegal. Anyway, um, so it's very confusing to people in the United States. They also don't like the fact that zeros to zero is a great match because an American way of thinking um, if the score is that low and it's a draw then it's like losing I mean it must have been a terrible game right <laughs> and in America we don't like draws or ties um, so in football they try to keep that from happening by having overtime and in fact if one team doesn't win during overtime then they do this thing called sudden death which sounds really, really scary, but no, it doesn't mean they kill the players. It just means that um, this is not like ancient Rome or whatever. The gladiators, oh, well, sometimes no, never mind. But they, but it does mean that the next team to score wins, and that's the way they end the game. Because Americans hate games that you know they want winner take all. That's the style here, winner take all. If you're, you know, running for election and you get you know a slight, slight majority of of the vote, then you win everything. You know. Uh, it's not like proportional representation where your party gets a certain percentage of the seats in, in your parliament, or in our case, the Congress, um, based on the amount of votes that your party got, anything like that. There's no proportional representation here for the most part. It's just winner take all. If you get the majority of the votes, you win no matter what. If there were three people in the race or four people and you got 30% of the vote, you could still win. So it gets crazy like that here. And people like that, you know. But in uh, international football, a tie can be a great game. A draw, as they would call it in the U UK, is not a bad thing necessarily. In the United States, it is. It's like losing. It's like two Americans, that's losing. They want to win. And they want to see a lot of scores, and they want to see a lot of scores fast. So <laughs> that's why they love Tom Brady, because he can throw a touchdown, and that's immediate six points with an extra point kick. That's uh, If they make it through the goalpost and the extra kick, which is one of the times where American football and soccer have something in common. 
directly. Um, if they make that that extra point kick, then it's seven points every time they do that. So it's quick scoring. The University of Washington just played Washington State University for the much coveted Apple Cup here. It's a cross state cross state rivalry that happens every year. The University of Washington Huskies won it 51 to 33. That was a great game because there was a lot of scoring, and Americans love that. Um, they don't like low scoring games, and they hate ties. They don't like draws. It's like losing to them. So all of these issues are why some Americans kind of get down on this um, sport that they call soccer. Although it is growing, the audience is growing, and there are more and more people who are getting interested, especially because of this year's World Cup, which has been so exciting. There have been so many uh, miraculous upsets, as I mentioned, you know, Saudi Arabia against Argentina, Cameroon scoring in the last few minutes against Brazil. But, of course, Americans were confused by that because, well, wait, Brazil went on... Uh, to the next round and Cameroon had to got kicked out even though they won they beat Brazil the top rated team I was like well that's a tournament you know obviously those people haven't seen NCAA basketball tournaments because you also have these elimination rounds etc our anglicization of other countries names people couldn't understand why when it when you they looked at the score and it was Spain it said ESP you know I heard somebody say what does extrasensory perception have to do with the, Sp the Spanish team. Well, you know, of course, anybody who speaks Spanish knows what you know, Espanol is. So. Inconsistent referee calls. Well, I have a whole series here on YouTube called, you know, when the refs get it wrong about NFL football. So soccer is not the only sport in which refs sometimes don't don't catch fouls, you know, don't make calls that they should. They don't like the low scores. They think it should be really easy just to run down the field and kick that ball in the net and get a lot of scores. And they don't understand, you know, how difficult it is to play against a great defensive professional team. So that's my report. I'm sticking to it. It's This is Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC Report. This is why some people in the United States have a lot of problems with soccer. Um, it's a cultural misunderstanding, a lack of understanding, um, but we'll probably get over that someday. I don't know if we'll ever get over this issue of whether it's called soccer or football. Um, to me, international football is what happens at the World Cup. You know, in the United States, people continue to call it soccer, but if I call it football they think I'm talking about the NFL so it gets very confusing to people in any case we'll we'll deal with that at a later time this is Mark Taylor Canfield you can catch me every Friday on the Jeff Santo show I'm a regular guest there at 2 30 uh, Pacific time 5 30 Eastern time Monday through Friday no actually every Friday but Jeff's on here Monday through Friday at revolutionradionetwork.com or jeffsantoshow.net and so I hope you're all, all having a great time uh, you can also check out my reports uh, on the Democracy Watch News podcast for Democracy Watch News. And check out my music video, Mother Freedom, dedicated to people all over the world struggling for freedom. This is Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle talking about football. Peace out, y'all.